More coverage now on Friday's officer-involved shooting. I asked Officer Dan Fry, who is president of the Madison Professional Police Officers Association, to come in and talk with us. Thank you so much for being here. Sure. Uh, Madison Police Chief Koval referenced an uphill battle in gaining, regaining the public's trust. What do you see as the biggest challenge going forward? I think there's two. The one is like the chief said. I mean, our department has worked very hard over the years through past chiefs and the current chief to to foster and maintain our relationships with the community to build those. Uh, we will have work going forward, obviously, to you know to repair the the trust that we've lost in certain segments of the community, um, and to continue to forge those bonds that we already have. Um, you know, by no means are we perfect. Um, we haven't achieved our goal. Um, we we might never achieve our goal, but we you know are committed to working as hard as possible to to continue that process. And then the second thing um, you know that I think is very important is just to to urge people to to be as patient as possible. We understand that this is a very emotional situation. Um, there are valid questions that uh, people in the community have. They have a right to get those answers, um, but we need to give DCI time to to do their investigation. Uh, thorough investigations take time, um, and we want to allow that process to work so that hopefully questions that people have are answered. Um, and if they're not, then they can you know pursue further answers. There's obviously a national narrative happening. There is a Facebook page now called Ferguson to Madison. From an officer's perspective, is it fair to make that comparison? No, I don't think so. I mean, every community is unique. Um, they have their own individual dynamics. Every police department is unique. Um, the, the city of Madison is not Ferguson. The city of Madison police department is not the, the police department down there. Um, again, you know, our community uh, in our department, uh, our department is very representative of the community in terms of its racial makeup and diversity. Uh, we continue to, to try to, you know, expand that. Um, you know, again, we've fostered relationships with our community over years, decades, starting under Chief Cooper and, and continuing through successive chiefs. Um, so, you know, I think our starting point is significantly different from the starting point of other police departments. Again, it, it's not a perfect uh, environment, but, you know, it's one that we've worked long and hard on and will continue to do so. Can you speak to how this incident is impacting the officer and the entire department? Yeah, and I would preface this um, by saying, you know, obviously I'm not trying to make a comparison between what the family and um, the friends of, of the person involved are going through. Um, there is no comparison. Um, but obviously there is an impact uh, on the officers who are involved in this. Um, it's very difficult for them. No police officer gets into this profession um, to, to take a life or to be forced to be put in that situation. Um, it's something that we recognize could happen, but we dedicate our lives, uh, we're willing to risk our lives um, to, to help other people and to, to be the, that you know, shield between them and dangerous things. Um, no officer wants to have to be, uh, be put in the situation where they make a determination that in order to you know, preserve their life or someone else's that they might have to use deadly force. It's something we're aware of, but we never want to make that decision. Does it make it more difficult with the national spotlight that is on our community? I think it does. Again, and, you know, not to uh, compare this at all to what the family is going through, but um, you know, in terms of, of policing in general and, and our officers, yeah, of, yeah, it does. What? And we're running out of time here, but I just want to make sure if people have questions, what is your recommendation? How do people, you know, reach out and, and get questions answered? Um, questions on the specific incident, obviously we'll have to wait until the investigation is complete. Um, then the DCI um, hopefully will, you know, they'll be able to answer questions. The district attorney will be able to answer questions. Our department will then have facts that they can um, answer on this specific incident. But if you have questions in general, I mean, we'd, we would encourage people always to just make contact with a police officer and ask them. Um, we might not be able to answer it again if it's to this incident specifically, but things in general, you know, we want to have those conversations with the public and we try to all the time. Dan Fry, president of MPPOA, thank you so much thank for you, joining Lee. us. Appreciate it. We'll be right back after this.